Hello. Welcome. Welcome to my stream. Hi, Lady Verona. I thank you. Thank you. I felt I felt like the music was appropriate today. I don't know why. There's no good reason. Um, I've got a lot going on. I've got one of my people out this week, so that means extra hard working. Yes, we're going to go from glorious, you know, astronauts saving the planet to horseback rides um, in comical manners. I'm going to be trying something a little different with y'all today, I think. Um, I think I've got it set up. I spent a little extra time working my screens here. Um, but uh, I'd like to show you a few things. It's building. We've got quite a bit of interest. Even commercial people are interested now. It's going gloriously. So Lady Ferona just asked about my plant sale and I am building um, a propagation station for my Zabrina plants right here that I've somehow managed to keep alive in just cuttings of water. Um, but I need to cut shorter pieces and make more of them so that they're ready for the plant sale. Um, to do that, I cut, remember that piece of wood I had that I like sanded live on last Wednesday? Well, here are all those pieces. I cut them down to size and they're all almost exactly the same size. I kind of, I blocked them together with clamps and then sanded it and um, yeah. Oh, uh, cool. That's really cool to know. I didn't know you could do that with sweet potato. Um, some sweet potatoes are quite pretty growing all on their own. But here's the wood that I sanded very, very carefully down to about 220. Um, I don't know if I'll use every piece, you know, there's some kind of knots on it. Um, so I don't know that I'll use every piece, but I'm kind of planning that some will be lost in the process of making, as so often happens. Um, and so here's my template that I printed out. So it should be that I can cut this out and clamp tape. I'm going to measure that. That doesn't look the same to me. Clamp tape um, these things to the piece of wood um, and it will help me get exactly where I need to go um, in terms of so it's bound the six. Bound the six. Okay, they're, they're fine. It's fine. It's fine. Always measure. Measure twice. Cut once. Um, so I'm going to be, I'm going to cut this out. We're going to clamp these bad boys together and I'm going to attempt to drill through these. Now the measurement here is the width of the bottle. Yeah. Like that. See, um, that's, that's truth right here. There you go. Truth for you. Um, but I need it to be the width of the neck of the bottle right here. So what I've done is I took my little fake calipers. I'm just using a, um, a compass, kind of getting the width. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but this is where I think I want this to be. Um, and here are the drill bits. I think I'm going to have to use to do this because none of the other drill bits were the appropriate diameter. Um, so I need to pick which one fits. So that one seems a little big. I'm going to suspect this one's going to be a little small. So I think that's the, I don't know. See, I think this one's a little small. I am, I can always sand it. Um, I can always sand it. But I think, I think this one, you know, sanding will take away some. Um, but this, let's see, will it actually neck down on it? See, this is like the same with, it's a little narrower, so it will neck down. Um, can you see what I'm doing there? Let me put it up against a solid background. Um, it is a little narrower, so I think it will still hold and support the, uh, the wood um, or hold the glass bottle. But um, here, let's tilt you up so you can see just a little more. Um, there we are. Better? I think so. So, uh, you know, like, how do I test this? There's the question. I need to test this. Um, and I need to get the bottle on it and do the least amount of work possible. Um, because that's what you want when you're testing stuff. So I'm, I'm going to go with the smaller one to start question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, 
I may get not very far on this today and then have to rethink some things. Um, sometimes that happens. So I'm going to go with the smaller one to start um, and then figure it out from there. And I'm going to pre-drill a pilot hole in the center marks here. Because as you can see, this thing has a little center piece. Can you see that? See that? It's a little pointy bit. And that pointy bit can go into the hole that I make with this and keep me centered. Um, so I think that'll be important. The other thing is I have, here we go. Let me see. Can I show you? I do have my drawings um, scanned into Photoshop from, doo -doo -doo, from the, uh, can you see it? Can you see it? Okay, good. Um, I think you can see it. It's being slow, but I think you can see it. So I do have my drawings from Friday all scanned in. Um, and I can, I can show you that work. Let's get started on this because if I can bust through this and it works out, then I can paint them and set them up to dry so my plants have a home. Um, the t-shirts, I do want to work on. I know T-Shirt Beardo um, is looking forward to having those so that they know how to make them. Um, but I'm feeling like uh, I need to get this propagation station done because I already cut the plant. What was I thinking? I don't know. Somebody tell me. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Somebody. Um, so let's do this. Are you ready for power tools? Um, oh, and uh, delightfulness. Uh, would, you, would you like to see my teeth? Okay, so you can see my smile. Yes, I know that. You can see my smile, talking about alignment. Um, but I got some teeth back. Hi, kitten, how are you doing? I'm about to show people my teeth. You never know what you're gonna get in this chat, in this stream. I, I know, I know. You never, you never know what you're gonna get here. Um, but these are my teeth. Hi, Kitten, I'm so glad you're back. Here we go. This appears to be the teeth in my maxilla. Yes, yes. Do you see this? Is it is it creepy? Is it everything you've ever wanted? <laughs> these are my teeth. So we, I, I had a casting done on my teeth because I'm getting to the point that my jaw is popping whenever I open it to like chew on a bagel and it goes pop, pop, pop while I'm chewing. It's not, it's not comfortable, but it doesn't hurt. So, um, so yeah, the dentist was like, you should have a night mouth guard. And I was like, I've been wearing this cheapo one that I got at the grocery store, whatever. Um, and uh, they were like, yeah, no, we want you to have a custom one. So I had to have a custom one made. And uh, so they had to take an impression of my teeth. It was great. I got to talk to the technician who took the molds of my teeth about alginate consistencies. And if they had any struggles like I was having with some of the alginate texture uh, challenges I had, like, um, you know, the reason this skull came out just a little fuzzy and it shouldn't have because it was cast from glass. So, um, yeah, it, it is very defined. Um, Alginate does a great job of catching those details, molding up pretty quick. Um, and so you can see there are some chips. I don't know if you can see this, like right here. Um, there's a chip there. So it, it, it did chip just a smidge. It's not like the worst ever. Um, I, you know, if I play with this, I may fill those back out, just sculpt them back in and then, you know, make a casting of my own. There are a few bubbles, nothing catastrophic. Um, I can probably just go in and smooth those out, right, like this. And I do hope to take um, a silicone negative of these teeth here. You wanna see my bite? Here's my bite. Look at that. That is a bite paid for with braces, years and years of braces. Um, uh, is it, is it creepy? Is it, is it wonderful? Is it everything you've ever wanted? Rawr, 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 rawr. There we go. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't hinge right on those teeth there. Um, it would, it would hinge like back here. And then you chew and you do this kind of thing. Actually, the bottom probably is the one that's moving at the top. Uh, <laughs> but does it does it look like me? Does it look like me? Do you believe these are my teeth? 
<laughs> um, <laughs> here, it's my tea. Do you love it? It's wonderful, isn't it? This tooth is surprisingly sharp. It's apparently supposed to be, but on this side, it's pretty rounded. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, you can see that tooth being pretty sharp here. And actually, it chipped. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. It chipped. Um, so there's your little dose of surprise. Um, I don't know that I'm ever going to come on with my mouth guard on. I had them trim it down as much as possible, but there's still this clear piece that sticks out of my mouth when I put it in. Um, so that's wonderful and creepy. Um, yeah, it's, it's a real nice look to go to bed. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to age. Okay. Truth be told, I'm starting to age. And, um, so now I need to wear a mouth guard when I go to sleep, right? To keep from grinding my teeth. And on top of that, <laughs> I have to start putting a pillow under my knees, like a big pillow under my knees when I go to sleep. Um, I know, right? Like how dull, boring is that? Um, so I, I need to get like, <laughs> uh, so I'm, uh, yeah. So my, like, if I sleep on my stomach, I wake up with back pain. <laughs> um, here are the things someone tells you about getting older. Uh, if you go to sleep wrong, you uh, wake up with pain. And um, I don't like this. I don't like this aspect of getting older, but it's, it is what it is. So um, we shall live, but um, it's really getting bad. The pain that I get when I sleep improperly. So, um, I know my parents have one of those beds that like adjusts and stuff for different people on different sides and it like puts a head up or it puts the feet up. But even my grandma has a bed like that. And then I found out like two weeks ago that one of my friends has a bed like that. And I'm like, I guess I am in the age group that should maybe have this, you know, what do I know? And, um, and so I'm like, I'm thinking about this, but so I just started putting a pillow under my knees to keep me from rolling over onto my stomach while I sleep. I know I'm so amusing. Um, but I really, I really don't want to roll over because when I wake up on my stomach, so every piece of me in my body really does prefer, um, every piece of me prefers to sleep on my stomach. So my, I'm except for that little spot in my back. So I'm like fighting it. Like the chiropractor is coming to my house once a week right now to adjust me. I just bought one of those killer mach uh, mas machine massage guns. It's like, um, really, really powerful. And it like makes you shake when you use it. Um, and it's a lot of work I'm doing just to keep my back from hurting and realizing that my friends have these, like, what I always thought of as, like, old people beds. Um, and my back is hurting when I sleep poorly. Um, maybe, maybe I need more help. Um, so, like, the things we admit to ourselves as we get older. Um, maybe I do need a bed like this. But so I'm trying putting things under my legs while I sleep so I don't roll over. I can still kind of convince myself um, to roll over like regularly. Um, so it's not a perfect fix. So I'm thinking about getting like those bed insert topper thingies that are like 200 bucks instead of, instead of spending like $10,000 on a bed. Um, I really don't know if it's going to work. Okay. So here we are. Here's the depth. Um, I could maybe get one more, two more in. Um, Let's put the crappiest people pieces on the top and the bottoms. So things with knots in it so that if it splinters, um, it's not that big of a loss. Yeah. So, um, I, it took me forever to find a chiropractor that I was willing to see, um, because so many don't wear masks while they're visiting the patients and during COVID that's a big no, no for a compromised person. So, um, I didn't feel safe visiting them. And then I had, and, and even then, even some of the ones that were wearing masks or, or whatever, like Googled my boobs and I was just not into that. Um, excuse me. So, um, yeah. So see, this is a guide. We're going to use this to drill through these pieces of wood. We are going to 
clamp it together. Um, so wonderfulness, joy, joy, happy, happy, whatever. Um, you know, I'm getting old. Such as life. Uh, I'm middle-aged for real. <laughs> you know when you sleep wrong and you can wake up and your whole day is ruined because of back pain from sleeping wrong. So here I'm, I'm leveling it all out. It's one of the uses of this kind of a grid, grid system here. Taps help with vibrations and help it settle in. But yeah, so I am just not thrilled about aging. <laughs> but, um, you know, little things. We all got to do them. Okay, so here we go. I clamp this side together. Now I'm going to clamp this other side together. I like these squeezy clamps better than the pipe clamps because I need the extra help. It's like having a third hand. My my partner really seems to like the pipe clamps because he can make them really, really big. Um, but I don't view the loss of ease of functionality as a positive thing. Um, okay, so now it's... Uh, I did this the wrong direction. Let's switch the clamps. Because I need this green facing up when I drill. So, um, doo -doo -doo. here we go. You can't even see. I need the green face facing up when I drill so that I can see the marks on it, which means I need the extra stem, the extra, I don't know what you would call it, but I'm thinking I'm going to call it a stem, uh, sticking up of the clamps. So yeah, I'm getting old. Whatever, right? What else is new? What's new with you? Anything fun and exciting or you you got you got planting stuff coming up, right? There we go. And I'm squeezing it real tight, trying to get these really clamped on there. So checking again that my drill depth is going to be adequate. I do believe it is. And here we go. I really like the Ryobi drills. Um, I I found this to be lighter than my old school ones the, that I had. Um, so I really like the draw uh, the drivers when I can get those. Um, but this isn't going to work for that because that's for screws and stuff. Um, so I'm going to drill these pilot holes first. Um, and then I'm going to get that bigger bit out and try this. I might end up clamping it to my seat here just to get it there. Small plant sale, birdhouses. That sounds cute. Seeds running out of space. Um, any more to start today? Yeah, I, I did start some peppers. Old plastic window blinds. Oh, that's a good tip. I wonder if I have, I might know where some of those are. I don't have, I mostly use the cellular shades, um, but that's a good idea. I've been using popsicle sticks. Um, okay. Um, what I need is this to sit like this. Hmm. I've been just using Sharpies, but any, any paint or those Sharpie, um, oil markers, those last all season. Uh, yeah. Um, so if I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that could do it. I see something that's going to work. Not at all what this device was intended for. However, it may meet our needs. I just want something that's going to hold it in place. Ugh, it's not tall enough. Well, I could risk putting a hole in it. Mm. So, okay, the clamps are not balancing, of course, so we're going to switch them around. What's this? Yeah, like that. So this is a little more balanced. So exciting. Hmm. I'm not familiar with those pens as much. Okay, here we are. Are we ready? I'm going to scoot it off to the edge of the camera. Here we go. Don't 
don't force it too much. Let the grill do the work. Here we are, we're out. See that? Not bad. A little messy on the bottom as it often is. Um, so I'll scar it, whatever. Um, it's, we weren't really using it all that much. So I'm not, I'm not too, too bent out of shape out of it. Um, I mean, I, if I could find something else that's of like a similar thickness and non-rolliness, I would use that, but I'm not seeing that. Could use a tissue box. Tissue box might do it, but that might be a bit too springy. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm going to keep going with this because this worked well. Um, so it'll put a little hole in it. I'm not nervous. Sometimes you sacrifice things. We're not using it. Again, don't press hard. Let the drill do the work. And I can kind of tell when I'm about to hit the plastic because of the depth. And believe it or not, so if I pull this aside, look, there's the drill mark. It didn't even go through the plastic. Whatever. It's fine. Here we go. Second drill. Or third drill, rather. Hole to be drilled. Are we ready? Can you see enough? Are you getting enough exciting views? Next one. Drilling. Mm, that one is a little off. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'll keep it in line. And I'm through. Yeah, that one's pretty off, actually. Um, okay, we'll figure it out. And the next one. Let's try not to make this one go off. It's a little off, but not as much. Not bad. Not bad at all. On the back end, it looks really crooked. I'll admit, that looks crooked. We'll see how well it works. Um, this could be the wrong way to do it. I don't know, I'm learning right now. So let's undrill and let's put the piece on that we selected earlier. Now this is the one I'm a little less convinced about. Um, this is gonna get hard because the look at the the size of that that bit um clamping to something else is not outrageous and i don't like how springy this is for this. okay so we solved one problem now we get to move on to a second problem um i have other things let me look Um, I have a sturdy box. Hold on. Sturdy box. Two of them. Manufactured by the same group. So they should be, um, good for this. Let's try it. Okay. I don't know. They may be too big. Mm, it's not really giving me any room to work with. Okay. Nope. Not these. Um, another box. Another something that will hold it up, support it. Mm. <laughs> you would have thought I'd have thought this part through. I did, partially, partially. I, I thought this through partially. Um, little box, little box. Ooh, that might work really well. I might have landed all this work. And uh, let's not take apart that tool yet. Um, what else? What else? Ideas. Um, 
books, business cards. A stack of business cards? Fine. No, this doesn't have enough of a ledge on it. I don't have a lot of ledges. I'm gonna have to put it here. You're gonna miss out on some views, I think. I'm sorry, friends. I need to clamp it to this. In the corner. I think that'll be one of the best options. Right? Like this. And you'll be able to still see what I'm doing. How's this? Yeah. So I'll drill out these two. Let's try it. Yeah. There we go. Little guide hole. Okay, it does. It tears up my paper. Doesn't look centered to me at all. Nor is it really drilling through. It's not going through. Um, this may be a drill press moment. The drill press is downstairs. So we're gonna stop this project for now. I get it, you were excited, but the drill press is downstairs. I can't, I can't change the fact that the drill press is downstairs. It needs to be in the basement. Okay, so that didn't quite work. I'll show you what it looked like. Here we go. It's also not particularly centered, and that bothers me. You see that? particularly centered. Um, so I'm going to think through this. It may be I need to make some kind of a jig for the drill press. I would do it. Um, okay, so let's clean up our sawdust and move on to the other project I have to share with you all today. Let's see, just picking up some of this dust. Getting it out of the way. You know, with really dynamic fighting music. Um, yeah. Not that I'm going to be really using this space. Um, to do the things I'm just kind of cleaning up a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to switch to is showing you what I'm doing with um, the t-shirt designs. So I'm going to pull my keyboard out in front of me because I do use hotkeys. Um, it really makes all designing faster to use hotkeys, so I highly recommend them. Um, let's switch to Photoshop. Now, what do y'all really see here if I do this? If I put this window here, is that at all helpful? It does not appear helpful. Um, Photoshop is here in big. Why is it not showing that? It should be. Okay, that's better, right? You can still kind of see my... Um, I don't know why I did this. You can't see my tools. Well, that's no good. All right, we'll try something else. Yeah, that's no good. You can't see my tools at all. But now, if I show you Illustrator, 
Do you see anything? You don't. Okay, fun or not. Um, dropping this over here. This is a lot harder for me. Okay, we'll make it work. Here we go, there's the beetle. I don't know why this second vision of the beetle is appearing. It should not be. Let's uh, save that. So here's the beetle I drew. Here's the skull. We need to rotate that. Let's figure out the hotkeys for that. Um, image, rotation, cool, 180. And let's save that, right. And let's do that to the next thing. Image. Image rotate. No, that's not what I wanted. Image 180. There we are. Save it. Cool. So these are all the little drawings I did. How is this one so flipped? Um, nope, not that one, but horizontal. So, cool. Thanks for that. As I pull up more things, I need to make sure everything lines up. So this one, sorry, I'm, I'm moving between like three different screens. So bear with me if I seem like I'm a little lost, it just means I've lost my cursor for a second. Um, image, rotation, note, Image, Y, comma, 180. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Now the next thing. Image. Oh, this one has a little bit of pencil marking. Fun. Um, Let's do it. Here we go. No, not that, not that. So I also have this camera that hangs down in my screen, in front of my screen. So it kind of blocks part of my screen. Um, but it's how it makes it look like I'm looking directly like at you most of the time. Um, but it does give me a dead spot uh, that I can't see through. So I'm just setting these up so that they're going to be super duper ready to go all on to the same canvas. It's definitely not quite right. Very nice, very nice. And this should be the last one, and it needs to do a 182. Okay, so now um, I'm going to start putting everything on the same layer. Oh, I forgot to scan one. I forgot to scan one of these things. So you remember at the end of last week, I did these inkings um, right here just kind of trying to figure out which one really looked the way I wanted it to. Um, 
And I think we settled on this one. So I gotta scan that in real quick. Hold on. It won't take me it won't take me long at all. But I do gotta throw it on the scanner. There we are. So I'm gonna scan it in. Uh, open my scanning platform. It's gonna take me just a quick second to scan this in. There we are. Let's scan it. I'm only doing 300 DPI. I don't think I need to go up to 600 DPI. My typical is to scan at 600. And let's hydrate. And let's drop that into our Photoshop here. Do do do. Why are you being annoying? Open my Photoshop. Let's throw it here. Here it is. And let's say image rotate again, just like all the others. Should have done it differently, I suppose. Now this doesn't have the X's on it, which is actually a little bit of a problem. We'll manage. Okay, so this is gonna be the base of my drawing. So I'm gonna take each layer that I drew on those um, tracing paper pieces on last Friday, which you can watch in my former stream, uh, previous stream, and I'm going to put them right on top of this layer, okay? And I'm going to do something called a multiply. Are you ready for this? So let's um, A, control A to select all, uh, control C, and then I'm going to drop it on top of this, just like control V. All right, theoretically, it should be in the right spot. It's not going to be though. Don't worry. So I'm going to change this to a multiply layer. Yeah. And then you can suddenly see like right through it. Isn't that cool? Um, I'm going to turn off this background real quick and I am going to zoom in. Give me the Z for the zoom hockey. Thank you. Now there, it is a little messy. See this? I don't love it. We got to drop that down. So it's just a lot of mess. We can do something here. Let's do it. I'm going to go back to the original drawing and do it there. So what I want is I'm going to increase a couple things in this. We're going to go image um, adjustments. We're going to uh, adjust the brightness and contrast. That will give us, and of course it drops the menu right behind my camera. Hold on. Do, do, do. Can I grab the menu and move you? Thank you. Um, that's up brightness. So we get rid of a lot of that grayness. I don't want the grayness. Um, cool. Um, and then how about the contrast? Does that help us any? Does not appear to help us a little bit. Okay, cool. And I'm actually going to erase some of these marks. So why it gave me pink because my background color is currently selected as pink. I'm going to do that. That will hopefully turn my background color to transparent. Yes, it did. Okay. And let's, uh, do that. Do that. Is my opacity up all the way? It should be, but it's not. And that will help us get rid of these little spots. There we go. That's all I'm doing. I'm just cleaning it up a bit. Okay. See this? Okay. Now in through here, it's a little messy. I am going to clean that up a bit too. And um, I'm going to do that with a white brush. So this is my brush that I currently have selected. And of course, there we are. We want the hardness up. We want the size down. Uh, that's even more than I want. And I don't have my tablet hooked up at the moment. I just use an old fashioned Wacom. Um, and of course, my brush color is this brown. So I'm going to select this white so that it disappears with everything else. All 
All right, let's draw. Yeah? Because I want to make this a little bit cleaner. Yeah, just like that. Do you see the difference? I think it's pretty cool to be able to do this. And now I'm going to switch colors. And I'm going to make this this. And then I'm going to fill this in. Ah! Nope, not what I want yet. So let's do this. That'll fix it. See? I just kind of clean it up a little bit. That's all I'm really trying to do here. I just clean it up. I don't know the hotkey for this function. I should, I suppose. Ooh, I'm getting a phone call. They can go to voice now. I'm busy. Um, so yeah, I'm just cleaning this up. See, little bits. I, I want to keep it on the bulky side because knowing me, I am very, 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 very likely to make it way too detailed for cold to print. Um, there we are. Little bits of things like that are what help us stay sane. I like it. I'm going smaller. See, I told you. Make it a three. There we are. See, doesn't it already look better? Um, and I'm going to clean this up. I know, I'm going too detailed, aren't I? It's a freaking t-shirt. I just, I gotta. It bothers me. It's my style. No, not really. My style is on the uh, very over detailed side of things. Let's just inspect. I don't even mind that this is a little off, but this, this does, this bothers me. See, I just need that angle done a little differently. See, all better. So let's, okay. Now the other thing I'm going to fix is right here. And I don't want to fix it too cleanly, right? Because we know this was done with marker and this is the style I'm trying to do. I'm trying. Oh, I grabbed the eraser. When I wanted to grab that, yeah. Okay. Have it. Okay. I like it. Nice, right? Pretty happy with that. So let's do this a little different. I'm actually going to. There's a couple ways to do this, really, truly. Um, I'm getting a lot of communications. No worries. Let's do a select color because it's really contrasty and I feel like we can do this. Um, so we're going to go over here. We're going to go to image select. Um, I think it's in your select. Select color range. I'm going to make that color range this black. You see that? Um, we're going to drop the fuzziness down. 
it, it's one of the advantages to when you're working. Um, so you can see when you're working in high contrast like this. Okay, cool. Now this selection is deceiving. Okay. Why? Good question. Um, I'm going to, so I have all the black selected, but I don't have any of the white selected. So if I go and bring this over to the other illustration, it's going to do some funky things. What funky things is it going to do? Let's, let's, I'll do it real quick. Control C, Control V. Oh, we don't need this layer anymore. It's going to do the same thing as here. See how I can't see the differentiation? We don't want that. So if I drop it here again, the same thing happens. Now I can maybe go like this where I select it and then I can say, uh, select, um, modify and I can expand and I'm going to expand it. 10 pixels sounds decent. Nice. Now on the layer behind it, I'm going to drop some white. I hit G to get that paint bucket and I'm going to change my color selection to the white of the paper. I'm going to hide my book. I'm going to fill this. Look at that. Do you see it? I'm going to deselect and I'm going to fill this all in. If I throw the book on top, do you see that? I gave myself a nice outline. And that's where that um, select, modify, expand can really come into play. I'm still not thrilled with it, and I'll show you why. Here, I'm gonna, sometimes it's helpful to have like a really wild um, layer color uh, behind everything just to kind of test things that are different. And since I'm only using white and black, red's gonna be a great choice for this. Um, so I just drop a red background behind, and I can see that this is not what I want, right? That doesn't make sense. So I'm going to hit G again. I'm going to, or I, I'm going to get that white. I'm going to hit G again and I'm going to fill, oopsie daisy. So that, that is open. That's not what we wanted. How is that open? Ah, it has all layers selected, doesn't it? No. Okay. Um, I'm on the wrong layer. This one. There we go. Look, it fixes it. See that? It fills it in. And this is what's going to make it so that when I drop this here, or this here, come on. Oh, because it's still background. When I drop this here, it gives us that nice outline so that when it gets printed on a shirt, um, it doesn't get lost. Right? You see it? Okay, let's do it with the next illustration as well. So we've done the book. I'm going to close the book um, and let's open the next one. Nice. Okay. And I am almost to the one minute or the, the one hour mark. Um, yeah, I'm getting another phone call because I've got something I got to take care of. Hold on a moment. This is Amber Nicole. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm good. Um, hey, I don't know if you know this. Um, I'm on the foundation board at the library. Um, and we are looking for new board members. Yes, sir. Um, and so I'm, I, I, I don't know if you know Yasmin, I'm working with her and I've been bringing on a bunch of my people because I think that they're not actually serving the population of Manchester very well. Um, so I figure follow the money. That's where it is. The foundation board just, um, raises the money. They don't do any of the decision making for the library. So I was wondering if you had time to like sit down over a coffee or lunch and talk about that. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I'm semi-flexible. It just depends on my class schedule. Here, let me um, pull it up. Do you have time this Friday? How, 
how does coffee at Wild Orchid at 10 sound? Yes, please. Awesome. Um, and if you, you know, if it bugs you at night or whatever, I can answer any questions that you have right now. Just, I know I'm, I'm someone who likes to know a lot. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll send you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, what is your, I don't actually have your email. Um, what is that? If you don't mind, cause I have your Facebook, but I don't have your email. B Brady. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I am really looking forward to this. And um, yeah, I'm so excited that you're at least willing to hear me out over coffee. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Hi, Lorianne, this is Amber Nicole at Uncharted Tutoring. I'm great. Hey, sorry about the miscommunication. I've been a little more swamped than I anticipated over the spring break or the, the winter break. Um, yeah, our, our program is limited to 15 kids. That's what we bring the supplies for. And I will actually be there today because Yasmin's out with some medical stuff. Avery will still be there, but you'll you'll be interfacing with me directly for the next for this week and next week. So can we can we bring it down to 15 kids? Okay. I'll be there about 15 minutes before the start, so um, 3.45-ish. I have not. Um, I mean, other than, I mean, I think I can vote there, or I did vote there many years ago. Um, so just that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, is it on the left or the right? Yeah. Okay, excellent. I look forward to it. Thank you. Bye. was supposed to be muted. I swear I hit the mute button. I hope that wasn't awkward for everyone. <laughs> Nothing top secret. Um, I just, I got a phone call from someone who's interested in working with me on the library board, which is super exciting. And um, I, I really respect him. He's a really, really smart dude. Um, and I get to work with his kids sometimes. So that's a lot of fun too. And then uh and then the other one was, I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got, um, uh, uh, 
one of my teachers, Yasmin, is out at the moment. So I am subbing for her at the school. So, um, yeah, I'll have to end by about 3.15, 3.30, somewhere in that hour. Um, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> I thought I was muted. Embarrassing. Um, but, yeah, I do run a company. So um, in between being creative. Let's bring it back to Photoshop, though. Here is, well, we didn't like that one. We liked this screen. Yes, where you can see my face. Cool. Um, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select, we're going to zoom in, right, first. We're going to zoom in, hit Z, wait for the cursor to change so that it acknowledges that I hit Z. There we are. We zoom up. And we're going to clean this up a bit. See that grayness? I don't want that. Image adjustments, brightness, contrast. Okay. We're going to shoot up that brightness. And I may clean up some of this in this screen. Um, Cause this is looking a little too rough for me. Um, see that? That's a little too rough. Let's clean this up. Just a little on the rough side. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? We want these brush strokey things to remain for the most part because we're trying to look handmade. Um, it's not my style of usual work, but I got some hot tips from my designer or from my, my t-shirt printer, and I'm going to listen to their expertise and try to do it this way. Um, not my native way of working though. I'm going to be completely honest. Just not my native way of working. Just clear it up a little bit. Just a little. Like I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to make Cole's job easier, really. And I don't even mind like a little bit of this um, missing stuff. I think that adds character. You can argue with me later. I don't know, it feels too organic. Uh, uh, it's so organic. Okay, okay, it's gonna be fine. Um, trust the people with experience. <laughs> Can you tell this is hard for me? Is this coming across as hard for me um, to be this loose? Because this is not as loose as I usually am. Um, it just isn't. Here we go. Okay, clean this up. I don't want this. I feel will distract from the arrow just a smidge, and I don't want that. Um, cause this is a little bit of detail that I'll be getting. All right. That's, that's better looking, right? Very handmade. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it'll be fine. Ah, I'm trusting people. I'm trusting people, and it feels weird. I'm trying to go loosey-goosey. Trying to go loosey-goosey. Okay, we're gonna have to accept this where this is. Let's go image select, and we're gonna select the color range, which is this black, and it's already got that queued up. Um, we're gonna control C it, and we're gonna drop it on that same design over here on the next layer. So I need to get to the point where um, I'm gonna control E, which will merge these two layers. So now that book and the white outline are on the same layer. Um, and I'm also going to uh, erase these little white dots because these look like mistakes. They look like computer mistakes even at that. So that's the book. I'm gonna label it book. I'm gonna call this path. And then um, I'm going to make a new layer and we're going to drop that new piece right here, control V. 
Um, and you can see, see those little arrows? This is why we made those arrows before. Um, because this is going to tell me where I want to place this. Look at that. Now there may be a little bit of a rotation challenge, just the slightest, um, as I adjust with my keyboard. Oh, that's good. Right there. Okay. Enter. That's exactly where it was in my original drawing. Are you proud of me or what? Um, let's zoom up on that. Nice ish okay now you know what i didn't do was give the path itself an outline because i do believe i'm intending for this path to um go in front of my acid base chart here the ph chart um so let's let's go to that layer let's say the same thing we're gonna select um color range right um, okay, but I only want the layer, um, so I'm going to do something different. I'm going to turn off the other layers, so it doesn't it doesn't affect it. Um, select uh, color range. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Now, how fuzzy am I? Uh, I don't really want it to be all that fuzzy. Okay, and I'm going to make a new layer. I think it's control new. I, I never use the hotkey for, ah, no, 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 that's a new piece. That's not what I want. Hold on. Okay. Uh, new layer. Got to bring the mouse back to the screen, new layer and wait for it to adjust. Give me a new layer. All right. And now I'm going to, so white is my primary color here. I'm going to go select modify there it is um expand 10 pixels was good the last time so i'm going to go with that again and we're going to fill this with white all right now we're going to drop it behind so that when i pull these up I have this. Uh, why did it do that? Hold on. Oh, because this isn't multiply yet. There we are. Okay, little awkward. Don't worry about it. Um, so that's the book. This is the pH chart. pH. Um, not bad. Do you see what I'm doing? Do you see it? Um, so this should be maybe on light in your screen. I don't know why, um, why the, oh, it's because it's in front. Here we go. Pull it behind both of these. Not bad. Do you see that? Okay. We're going to give it another white layer just to like give us something else to look at. Um, I'm deselected. I'm just gonna fill the whole thing with white. Okay, there. Not bad, right? Pretty happy with that. Um, so that's my pH chart. So we can get rid of that one. We don't need it anymore. Uh, let's pull in the next thing. So we just do this over and over and over again for each of the layers. Um, and you can see how working individually like this for each of the elements has its advantages. When you draw each one on its own layer, it, it begins to um, act, you know, you're, you're drawing analog, but with the advantages that you often get when drawing digitally, uh, like being able to move the layers around, um, getting rid of a layer when it's not working for you without losing all the work on everything else. So um, I, I think it's a really, really great method of working. Here we go. We're going to zoom in. We're going to take a peek at this black and white and see, uh, we're going to adjust it just like we did before with the brightness and contrast. We're going to up the brightness and get rid of some of that grayness. Okay, I'm loving the way it looks right this second. Um, that, that stapler <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> We're going to select 
uh, the blacks, like the color range. Um, mm, yeah, here we are, color range. And of course it's black. Uh, I'm gonna add to it, maybe, uh, maybe that fuzziness needs to be out. Okay. Yeah, let's um, control C and then drop it onto this final layer, control V. Not bad. Now, um, again, we're going to be looking for those state, the, the X. Oh, I selected the wrong layer. Let's lock that layer. Um, that will keep us from doing that again. And let's lock this layer too. And this one, because I don't want to move those around. Uh, so where's the stapler? That's the book. Is this the stapler? It's not the stapler. Where do you go? I put the stapler. Can you see the stapler? Which layer is the stapler? Uh, that's the path. Where'd it go? Did I just drop it onto the book layer? No, that's the book. Hold on, I gotta look at the original screen. There we are. All right, seven here is a stapler and brush. Stapler, brush. And we're gonna move it. Um, we're gonna lock. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna lock all these layers we're not working on. That will make my life a little easier. All right, this gets to move here. And we're trying to match it up onto that X. Do you see that? Oh, it's not in multiply mode, which is making our job just a little harder. And I want to move, no, I want to move you here, really here. Cool. Okay. I'm not opposed to this. Now let's take a look, let's zoom into it. And the same thing that I did before to the book and to the other layers, I'm gonna do here. So we are going to select that layer. We're going to go um, select, modify and expand by 10. Yeah, okay. And then we're gonna make a new layer that's gonna be directly under it. It's white and I'm gonna fill it with white. Got it. Watch, I'm going to fill it. Nice. You see this. Um, and I'm going to zoom out. Now, since I drew these things in line, they're a little different, so I'm going to have to fill these in. Okay. We're going to deselect. We're going to turn on the red layer and bring it up. There we go. And I'm just going to fill in on the white layer. Oh, this needs to be filled in. See this? Yeah, just getting all those little spots, filling them in real nice. needs to be bigger. G is the hotkey for the fill tool. Or just use the brush when it's being a brat. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Now it does have the advantage, I'm not sure, um, of putting that around the staples. Now herein lies the question, should the handle of the brush be black or white? I'm leaning towards white just to give this some lightness, but I can always change it later. So I'm not gonna fight it right now. Nice. Okay, and let's bring that red back down 
behind everything. Oh, you know what? We didn't do this uh, outlining thing for the, the pH meter, pH scale, not the meter, the scale. Okay, so I'm not loving the staplers in front of the book. So we are going to grab the book and we're going to bring the book in front. We're also going to control E and merge the stapler brush, brush layer into layer seven. Of course it lost the naming. Cool. Yeah, I like the staples going behind the book. Um, otherwise it just looks like I'm trying to staple books. And I'm on the library foundation board. I like books. <laughs> oh, the things you never expected to hear on my Twitch stream. Okay, so here's the pH um, scale. We're going to select it. Um, and we're going to do the same thing with select, modify, expand, 10. Okay, we're going to make a new layer. We're going to drop it below the pH. And we're going to fill it with white. Let's turn on the red layer and see if it did it. It did. Yay. Okay. I'm happy with that. Pretty fun. See, so this is how you make digital art faster. Like if you were doing this all by hand, it would take forever. It's fine. It's fine. Um, all right. Is this still the design everyone thinks it should be? I think so. We're going to have to figure out where all these little white dots are coming from. I mean, I know the process that's making them. I just need to find them, what layers they are. Uh, no, I don't need to save that. And let's get the next layer into here. Okay, we have the stapler. How about this one? Ah. So here is my resin um, part A, part B. This one's going to take a little work. So what you notice, right, is I still have this cell hanging out. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, because this is going to mess with my, uh, levels. Ah, because I still have the background. Cool. Okay. I did a content aware fill. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay. Let's, uh, control D. We're going to do the same thing we've been doing, which is image, um, adjustments, brightness, contrast, up that brightness. And I am not loving some of this lininess that's still present. So we may do this more than once. Image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. Let's do this. See how it cleaned up more? Um, that's better. Zoom in. Let's, I still don't love it. Mm, we'll make it work. Let's select the color range. By going select color range. Um, okay, should it be fuzzier or not? Let's actually go less and maybe we'll lose some of those little bits. Oh, no, that does not work. Do you see that texture challenge? Seeing the marching ants go around like this means I haven't really selected all the black in there. So we're going to go select. Oh, wait, let's go. Let's reselect that. There's another way to modify this. Uh, select, modify, we can, um, smooth it. Uh, what is that? I can't leave that pixel. Let's go two. There we go. This is going to fix it. So we control C that. Of course it's still upside down, but We'll figure that out. Control V that. So this is the resin. And we're going to control T, which is transform. Oop. There we go. That's where I want it. Ish. Do we have any X's? I may have forgotten the X's on this layer, but it looks about where I want it. So remember, we still want the resin to get filled in. We're going to uh, turn on the red layer and turn off this because this is going to oh, turn off. We're going to combine the path with its background. No, that doesn't work. Never mind. 
Okay, for now, do this. Come on, okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna erase that, because I don't love it. Get the resin. See, I've kind of got some white dots in it that I'm not thrilled with. Okay, that'll work. That's better. I don't mind a little bit of jitter. Jitter's okay. Is it? Is it though? Okay. Uh, we're gonna select those pixels. We're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Select, modify, expand, right, by those 10 pixels. And then we're gonna drop white in there on a new layer that goes behind it. Fill it using the G hotkey. And now I'm gonna fill it again, control D. And now I'm gonna, on that white layer, just fill in all this white, see that? Doesn't that, doesn't that make you happy? I don't know, it makes me happy. When things go smoothly and according to plan, I get happier. Now, I'm not actually planning on this being a two-part shirt. What I'm planning on this happening is that the white will be the negative space of the shirt. But for now, it's a nice fast way to work to not have that. I am not convinced that these things are as dark as the other areas. I'm thinking, so one of the things you can do is duplicate and do a multiply. Um, I make this a multiply. Nope, not that one, because that's the white. So let's combine these and now they're darker. And then we're gonna you know, combine these two and we'll turn back on the layers I turned off. And this needs to go above the path, right? Theoretically. Where is it? Trying to merge the layers. There used to be a hotkey for it. But my hotkey didn't appear to be working. Okay. Look, we're beginning to get like a look. Do you love it? The red is making us look a little communist. I'm sorry. It's not the intended color for this to be printed on. So we've got the resin bottles. We don't need this layer anymore. Let's, or this, this document. Which one's this one? Is this the skull? These are the diamonds. So here we are. So our little crystals. We are gonna do the same thing. Image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. Oh, I hit levels instead. Image. Adjustment, brightness, contrast. Cool. That's about where I want it. Um, I'm gonna cheat. Don't hate me, okay? Because this bothers me. Nope, oh, I want this one. Nope, that's a loosey-goosey one, isn't it? I want the straight one. Not the... Ay, ay, ay. Is it this one I want? I can't remember. There we are. Straight lines. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be better than this. Okay, 
this big. Uh, no. There we are. Nice, right? It just looks a little sharper. Is it too much? It's probably too much, isn't it? Ugh. I won't get rid of all of it. I'm just getting rid of a lot of it. Is it too much to get rid of? It is, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna do it anyways. Because I feel like if anything is sharp in this thing, it should be like this jazz. Not all of it. Is it M? Is M this tool? It's not. What is the hotkey for this? L. Got it. I can't see. Is it doing anything? There we are. So it's kind of hard. Um, the L is a hotkey because it's on the other side of the keyboard, and my left hand just hangs out, you know, using the hotkeys on the right side of the keyboard. And I just want to make parts of this sharp. You see that? It just does it look better, or am I making it worse? I want to keep some of the texture, okay? But that sharpness needs to hold on. I feel like that's better. Am I totally, like, ignoring everything? So, for a similar treatment, but we'll control i it, so it inverse it. Um, hit the L for the outside of this here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do seem to be upset when I don't make it perfect. I don't know. What does that say? I can't do it. Just a little straightness here and there. This is going to look really lopsided. I'm probably not going to keep this one. I can tell what's what's happening and I don't love it. Control I. Uh, no. Control Shift I. There we go. better actually I like it okay don't okay but I do see a problem and that is right here I erased part of this one so we'll take that gentler go bigger cool um okay okay this bothers me right here. This bothers me. So we're going to lasso that. Can I at least do that? Yeah, that's working. Don't love it. Let's get that brush up in there, thicken some of these lines, and that'll be more convincing. But not all of them. We need to get that down to like a five. Nice guess. So let's select um, the color range, right? Just like we did before. Nice, nice. I'm gonna, okay. Control C. 
Got it. Uh, and then we get a. Oh, it's behind my camera. <laughs> do do do. Do you like it that it looks like I'm looking at you, or at least around you, while I'm working? It's it's annoying for me. Just saying. Oh yeah, that skull is coming up. So I got about 15 more minutes of this, but that will have meant, um, if you take a look at what I'm doing, um, it means, um, it took me about an hour to assemble all these. Have you thought about that? How amazing that is? Okay, let's control V. Did it work? I can't tell. It's behind my camera. I'm guessing. So I hit Z. I'm trying. Those gems should be about here, and they are not. There they are. Let's move them around. Now, do we have little X's to line these up? Doesn't look like I captured those. I don't know why I just got like some kind of a weird pirate accent, but I did for a very brief second. But I'm not seeing an X to line up, which is fine. They can just float there. It's not like it's a big deal that they're not perfectly lined up. Um, it works. So again, same deal, right? We're going to select the black. You know what? Unselect. I might, what does it look like if I duplicate these? Not that much different. So let's do the multiply. No, not that. Move to the jeep do do it. I'm working with a little bit of a lag because of the broadcasting. Um, duplicate, drop it on top. It's a little better. Let's control E that. Very good. That time the hotkey worked. And let's, yeah, and select expand by 10. Very nice. Let's G that. Turn it into white, give it a new layer so that if I don't love it, it's okay. Drop that new layer behind the gems, fill it, and control D to deselect those colors. I'm going to just hit the brush and we're going to make that brush a little bigger and we're going to fill this in because I think it will be faster than trying to hit all those little itty bitty points with the fill tool. Cool. Do you love it? I'm kind of loving it. I mean, I think this will be a fun t-shirt is what I'm trying to say. Okay, cool. Let's go back to that layer where the gems came from and we can close it. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and ooh, let's grab the rainbow and dandelion. All right, first we're going to hit that contrast, right? I'm doing it again and again and again so that it really hits home to you, I hope, um, how to do this really well. All right, so this didn't completely clear it up. There we are. Okay, I find this acceptable. Let's select, uh, the cloud looks like it might have a little gray left to it. We'll work it. Select color range. Oops. Okay. Control C. Drop it on the new layer. And then that is not the new layer. But this is. Hey, I did that without seeing it. My cursor is behind the camera. Are you proud of me? I'm proud of me. Drop it on. All right, we're almost there. Remember this rainbow I want right about here. So it's going to replace the path for a smidge. Um, also, let's turn that to a multiply for a hot second, at least. You know what else I could do? I hadn't thought of this. So I could drop this down um, opacity-wise, and that might help me. It does. So we'll do that and lock it. 
and let's line up this rainbow exactly where we want it. And a dandelion, which we can separate these if we need to, okay? We shouldn't feel beholden to any of this. Um, I do kind of want to move that dandelion. No, I don't. As long as the leaves go past the line, I'm actually okay with it. So let's leave it there. Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, oh, it's on color burn. I won't multiply. It's that lag. Okay. So this is dandy and rainbow. What's this one? Uh, gems. They should be closer to one another. So this gem. Gem white. This is the gem white. Let's label. So you should always like name your layers. So that's resin. E, combine those, C, much better. Okay, um, nice. Let's select these, modify, expand the 10 that we need, or 11, it could be 11, I can't read it from here, honestly, it's, it's a tiny screen. It's like a quarter of my actual screen because it's inside my broadcast window. Um, anyways, so yes, I'm doing a lot of this, like, basically from memory. Okay, I've got the white, that's good. Good! Now we can deselect, and I can fill it all up. Not bad. I'll take it. What I'm saying, man. This is what I'm saying. It's kind of becoming adorable. Um, next layer. My goal is to get this all assembled by the end of the stream, um, which has challenges, I admit. Um, but I think I can do it. So image adjustments, brightness, contrast. I could do with levels, but I find this a little bit faster. Okay, now we can select a color range. We can control C that onto the new layer, right? And see that X? That X helps us guide us to the spot that we wanted it. And if the magnifying glass is on top of everything, and it's a multiply layer, a little easier. So my guess is, based on that ant placement, we have a lot going on here that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, what did I just do? I'm not sure. So I need to rotate it because that X doesn't quite make sense there. I don't love it. That's working for me. We may have to move it later. We'll deal. Alright, so again, we're going to select the glass. Select the glass. Select modify. And we're going to expand 10. We're going to give another layer. We're going to drop it below and fill it with white and then merge the two. I filled it with black. 
The Control Z button is my most used hotkey. That is the undo hotkey. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm happy with that. Do you love it? Kind of love it. So that ant's going to have to get multiplied, though. So, um, we'll deal. Let's control E. Why doesn't it keep my layer, layer names? Uh, so I'm not, I don't care, I guess, that the ant will be the same exact ant again and again. Control C, Control V, and drag it around. Twisting it around so it's a little more convincing. And then this one is going to be the one that we're magnifying. So we're going to alter it to line up. And we're going to drop it below the magnifying glass. See that? Do you love it? I love it. Um, I do need to move it over just a smidge. Okay, this one should... No, 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 no. Not you. Okay, you get a little. So here's another tr cheap trick. Um, no. We're going to object, uh, we're going to transform. Um, do that, just hit control T and I'm gonna, so this will make it look a little more um, different, animated, challenging, right? So you don't notice that they're all like freaking the exact same. They're a little too evenly spaced, I will say that. Okay, we got ants. Not bad. Wait, did I keep it exactly the same? I totally did. There we are. That's what I wanted to do. See that? That makes it more convincing. See? Did you see what I did? Variety people, the spice of life. Okay, I'm happy with that. Next layer. The skull is the next thing, huh? Oh, and then finally the bug. Finally the bug. All right, in here, image, um, adjustments, brightness, Contrast, up that contrast, up the brightness. Okay. Select a color range. And it probably knows what I want. It just can't figure it out. Okay. Control C. And we're going to bring it over to the new piece. Ooh. I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, and we're going to, so this is a skull, got it, we're going to bring it up here, uh, yeah, and then we're going to make a new layer under it, we're going to select it, we're going to expand it. That's, that's contra contract. We don't want that. I accidentally hit contract. Um, 
image. Oh. Select, modify, expand. Thank you. G, give me the G. I just hit hockey on accident. What just happened? Uh, I just crashed Photoshop. Not my first time in my life. Ah, but it's all still here. Very good. Hold on, I'm bringing it back to your screen. I did indeed crash Photoshop. It looks like the skull did it. Let's save this. Yeah, that's fine. And let's try the skull again. Select color range. Okay. Doesn't look great. Cool. Um, I want to select the black. I mean, cool. Okay, let's take it. Oh, please. That's not accurate. You know it. Why does it think that? It's being weird. Image. Select color range. Picking out the fuzziness. Okay, that is within our skills. Okay. All right, our merging ants have appeared. That means it was successful. And let's drop it onto our drawing. We also lost the white around the magnifying glass, didn't we? And all the ant work. Oh, okay, there it is. So let's, no, that's not what I want. Um, so we select that, get our marching ants, make another layer, drop it below, uh, filter, uh, select, modify, expand, 10, fill it with white, make sure I'm on white. Deselect and fill these spaces. Right? Okay, this is, I am almost done. The beetle isn't in here. Okay, but you guys get the idea, I think, of what I'm doing. Um, I have to get going because I've got a class to teach and I owe Brian some links. Um, so uh, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna control shift save it also so that I can um, save it as something that makes maybe more sense. Um, T-shirt, 20, 22 summer camp T-shirt. Okay, so that's what I've got today. I don't know how you feel about it. I don't, you know, if you haven't seen me work digitally, you may not have known this was in my wheelhouse. We're gonna add the beetle to this next and replace the ants after the Photoshop crash I had. Um, but here you go. Um, this is gonna be my summer camp t-shirt. It's gonna be on the crazy side, okay? It's just gonna be loosey-goosey. Um, 
So I hope you like love it. I hope you maybe buy one for me. I don't know. You probably don't want this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, this is the digital work. Um, I do a lot of this. I do. Um, I teach it a lot too. I just had someone contact me actually about private classes for Photoshop. Um, they want to learn how to draw on Photoshop, so I'm going to be doing that. But um, yeah, so here we are. This is it. I think this is all I got for today. I do have to get going for my afternoon class that I get to teach. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me work and stress a little bit. Um, you know, you can always follow me on Instagram or Facebook and get lots of cute, adorable videos that I also edit. Um, I have a video editor. She does uh, about a third of them. I do about two thirds of them. So yeah, here's what you were hoping for today, right? With a big giant t-shirt. Um, so I'm going to have to drill those holes right on the, I'm saying right a lot. I'm going to have to drill those holes on my propagation station on the drill press. If you're lucky, I'll drill it and record it and make an Instagram video out of it. And then uh, maybe I'll paint them in front of you. Would that be nice? I don't know. Until next time, peace, love, and science.